If I were uh, trying to accumulate power, I would try to accumulate a lot of information about people and control education and things of this nature. Uh, and I hate to sound conspiratorial, but you know we, we're, we're talking global warming is in, you know, woven into this, which is very international. Is there something be, beyond our government, uh, beyond some ideology at, at our government level? that is, is masterminding this or, uh, okay, <laughs> I'd like to hear some, I don't know if you have evidence or what, but I'd love, love to hear opinions or theories or facts if there are some. So uh, I, I think that I can talk a little bit about what goes on at Stanford. Uh, so I have a colleague at Stanford named Linda Darling Hammond. <laughs> and when you, I mean, there is a, there, when I, I noticed something, there was a vast change in competence on the part of the people in the education world. Uh, I, I, let, me, let me distinguish. I, when I say education world, I do not mean the, the universities. Um, the, the competence in the people in the education world dramatically increased uh, between the time when we, we essentially wiped them out in California in the math wars and had uh, 12 years of relative peace and real improvement in outcomes. Uh, and today, where four years ago, uh, we, we were completely outmaneuvered uh, by the, the, the people in the education world, just completely outmaneuvered. And all of a sudden, they put together the system, and Jane gave a, a very solid and, um, I, unfortunately, I believe, totally correct picture of, of, of what the world is now and what our expectations are now if we can't change things. So I kind of looked very hard, <clears throat> and I know most of the players, and I kept looking back at Linda Darling Hammond. And my conjecture here is that if you look at one person who is, uh, was capable of changing the the level of the education world that much that they could actually actually get at us, then there's that that's the one person, and there is such a person now. There wasn't uh, back in the late 90s. I'm delighted to be here. Leslie has been asking me about coming to Paris to do this talk for a couple of years, so it's always wonderful to come to Paris, and it is especially wonderful to have a chance to meet those of you working in this field. Uh, uh, the talk uh, is titled, like the book that uh, Leslie just mentioned, The Flat World in Education, after Tom Friedman's book, The World is Flat, which talked about globalization and how that's influencing all of us. Uh, and so I asked the question, what is the influence or the implication of this flat world for education after I had a conversation with Tom and he said, I know it's about education, but I'm not exactly sure you know, what, what it means. I wrote this actually while I was uh, heading uh, Barack Obama's transition team, uh, policy transition team, back in 2008. And I wrote it for him and I gave him the only hard copy my publisher gave me, he got. And uh, he promised to read it and I said I would give him a test and it would not be multiple choice. <laughs> so uh, we're still working on his performance assessment. Um, but I, I want to take up these issues that I took up in the book about the issues of inequality, about the nature of reform, and there's already been allusion to the fact that there are all kinds of reforms that are being uh, propounded by governments around the world, not only the United States, everyone is engaged in reform uh, because education is becoming more important uh, for individuals and society and because there are a lot of competing ideas about how to improve the quality and the equity of education systems. I want to start with America's own history around inequality, which is deeply rooted uh, in uh, you know, a period of uh, enslavement of African Americans, of uh, denial of educational opportunities to not only uh, enslaved African Americans and others, but Mexican Americans, Native Americans, and so on.